first they came for the communists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a communist. ICE is Gestapo, a state-sponsored law enforcement division created to wreak havoc in our communities, separate families, and punish people, well, overwhelmingly people of color, for the crime of wanting to pursue the American dream. When you commit a crime against this country, enter the country illegally, you should be worried. ICE terrorizes your neighbors with its indiscriminate exercise of force and has less to do with violent criminal apprehension than ever before. You don't target jaywalkers when you're trying to end violent crime, so why do ICE targets range from teenagers in middle school to little girls with cerebral palsy on their way to the hospital. And no, I, I didn't misspeak. ICE literally apprehended a child with cerebral palsy. A 10-year-old girl with cerebral palsy faces deportation after her ambulance was stopped at an immigration checkpoint while on her way to get emergency surgery. Do you feel safe? I, I feel much safer knowing that this criminal is getting deported. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a socialist. And it doesn't end there. Just look at Long Island, for example. Remember at his State of the Union where Trump made it seem like Long Island had been overtaken by Salvadorian murder gangs raping and killing indiscriminately? And by the way, MS-13 has been responsible for a high number of murders in the area, I will admit that. And violent criminals and gang members who are here illegally should absolutely be deported. However, ICE has used this statistic and Trump's constant fear-mongering to justify what The Intercept calls the new school to deportation pipeline. Now in the Long Island school system, undocumented Documented minors are not protected by the law, and they can be reported for insanely trivial things like a scribble on a notebook or for wearing a Lady Gaga t-shirt, which no one should be punished for. Lady Gaga's great. And if you're not documented yet, even if you're waiting on your green card to arrive, you basically have no rights. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a trade unionist. And ICE not only deports children, which is already incredibly inhumane, they also target immigrants who are involved in political advocacy. They detain activists for absolutely frivolous reasons. For example, citing a 10-year-old driving infraction, ICE arrested Elisio Gerardo, who is the husband of a sanctuary church leader in Colorado. Last year, ICE detained and threatened to immediately deport dreamer Daniela Vargas right after she spoke at a rally opposing a proposed state anti-immigration law. But what does the director of ICE, Thomas Homan, have to say about all this? I'm enforcing laws that they've enacted. I'm enforcing laws that the president signed. Eh, except that's not exactly the case, because the authorities always enjoy a great deal of discretion over which laws are enforced and how severely. The laws and enforcement in the previous administration kept ICE in check, directing agents to steer clear of otherwise law-abiding residents, even if they were undocumented. So. Basically, grandma doesn't get the boot for a broken taillight because that shit is inhumane. Yet, even with those directives in place, the Obama administration still deported more people than Trump in his first year. But there's one area ICE has nearly tripled its enforcement on, non-criminal immigrants. Now, under these new directives, ICE happily targets low-hanging fruit, severely increasing the amount of legal permanent residents since, to a racist shitlord like Donald Trump, these are just numbers on the board. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out. Because I was not a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're a law-abiding legal permanent resident, even if you're here legally and ICE doesn't like your tone, or if you have a tiny smudge on your record, they will target you for deportation. It doesn't matter if you were brought here at the age of one and 29 years later, your five-year-old son is battling leukemia, ICE will first tell you you're not a priority when you submit an application for sanctuary, then they'll detain you years later. No one is safe. Community leaders and business owners of immigrant backgrounds are subjected to intense scrutiny and get detained. Even doctors aren't safe. A doc a doctor has been arrested, detained by ICE after living in the U.S. for nearly 40 years. This guy escaped Poland at the age of five and was a legal permanent resident for 40 years. He was nabbed for two crimes committed in 92 when he stole property worth under $100 and then he broke property over $100 and the offenses were later expunged from his record anyway. But that didn't stop ICE from deporting him. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. Now, I know I'll be criticized up and down for this comparison I've made linking ICE to Gestapo, but it's one that you have to understand. Yes, ICE isn't rounding up immigrants to gas them to death, but that's not how the Gestapo started off either. We live in a time when ICE is actively trying to become a US intelligence agency to get warrantless surveillance powers. History is riddled with examples of horrific, inhumane abuses perpetrated under the veil of following and enforcing the rule of law. Don't forget that Gestapo was also enforcing the laws of their land at 
that time. Laws of the land change with time and progress, and it's up to us to stand for that change we want to see. It's probably why Holocaust expert Robert Gallatly described the Gestapo as a reactive organization which was constructed within German society and whose functioning was structurally dependent on the continuing cooperation of German citizens. So if Americans want to stop our very own modern day incarnation of the Gestapo, it's up to us to speak up. It's up to us to speak out and resist. I'm Asam Piker. Please share this video with your friends. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube, on Instagram at Asandi Piker, and on Twitter at Asan the Hun. And this has been The Breakdown.